So you guys probably think this is the only shirt I own. I got sponsored by Blockbuster. So if you guys want to make it a Blockbuster night, head to Oregon. There's one left. Set up. Steve and Eric are coming in this morning. They were supposed to leave at four. They ended up leaving at three. They couldn't sleep. They were just excited to get to deer camp. Who wouldn't be excited to go to deer camp in the middle of summer? Since I knew they were coming in, Ryan was sleeping in, I decided that I was going to go fishing. At the end of our road is a really big lake, and I've never got to fish it. I don't think any guys at the camp have ever fished it before. I'm not real sure. But I wanted to go fish it. So I brought my seagull. Try I don't fall over. Try not to anyway. That one. I got a fish, people. Oh no! I look like a largemouth. No way. Dude, that's my favorite lure. As beautiful as the lake was and as cool as it was to do that, kind of disappointing. I caught the one pike there at the end. I was really glad that he shook off because I hate pike. It was pretty cool. It's, it's, you know, it was one of those things I had a couple hours to spare because we were working at deer camp. We weren't there to play. It was just a good experience. I'd love to go back and have more time to do that. Maybe just actually go to camp to camp. Eric and Steve get there and we take them to the tin can, show them the tin can. So we do some more clearing at the tin can. And then we go out to one we call the China Hutch. Did you get my good side, Josh? Was that my good side? It's always a good side. Taking pictures? Hang on. <laughs> the lane on this blind is about 10 yards wide, but if you don't see them coming in, they'll catch you by surprise. And our blinds are so wide open that if they do spot you, they will leave. So you have to be ready. You have to be able to see them coming in and then you can prepare, you know, you can prepare to make that shot. And so that's what we did. We opened up those lanes drastically. We probably opened that, um, the, the lane right in front of us. We could see hundreds more yards. I mean, it's, it's hard really to say, I mean, you just got to look at it and see how wide open it is. And before that, know that it was only a 10 yard opening. The guy, you're up here. When I was at the China Hutch, unfortunately I didn't do a before video, but I did do the after video. And it stinks because I wish you could really see the difference because with all these trees and all the foliage in the background, you really can't tell how much we opened up this lane. 
the left side. Knock that one right in the middle out. The big one? Also, Eric and Ryan opened up this huge lane. There's a logging road that goes directly across the China Hutch and then it veers off and goes southwest. They opened up this angled lane that goes from the logging road that we're sitting on to the logging road that's going southwest. So now it's open all the way down to that logging road where we'll see them and then we should be able to see them way off in the distance and be prepared for when they come to our shooting lane and hopefully knock them down. Eric wanted to get his trail camera set up. He's got the Link Micro I think and then he also brought Gary, somebody else that has been coming to our deer camp. He's in a couple of my videos and he's here at camp with us via FaceTime. What's up Gucci? What's up? <laughs> Gucci mama. All right, I gotta go turn this sucker back on. Gary was activating his camera from eight hours away, and then we had it with us, and then we set it up on the tree, and then he was letting us know that images were coming through via FaceTime, and then after that, uh, we ended up logging in to his account, and so we're able to see those images ourselves. So we wanted to get the feeder up as high as we could so that the bears couldn't get into it. So Ryan and Eric just have, like Ryan was on my razor and Eric was on uh, a ladder that was at camp that was old and wooded and only had half the extension because so it really wasn't an extension. We know that the bears are going to try to get at it. And so we wanted to, the first thing we wanted to do was, was to get it up high enough so that they couldn't reach it just, you know, standing on their hind legs. Two more GRKs. Where's that? Down here. I think they should put one underneath it, Ryan. I, I can't. Yeah, that grabbed really good. Rototeller looks a lot nicer, Josh. I still think there should probably be a safety tie off, right? Like, yeah, right here, right? I mean, wherever you can reach it from the ground. So it took a couple tries, but Eric and Ryan got it up there. They got it hanging. And then we wanted to hang the feeder so that it, the animals were just used to it being there. So it wasn't new. We don't want to come out during the season and then fill it up and then there's just new weird objects it's just out in the middle of this field and it spooks the deer, it spooks whatever animal we're hunting. So we just basically just hung the cornfield over, left it there. Me and Ryan are hopefully going to pull a bear tag and then go back up in September and then we're going to fill that in September or October and then that way we'll, the cornfield will, will get running and start feeding those deer ahead of the season before we even get there. Just finished this up. We're about to come out and see it real quick. I think I started it, it was Thursday. Now it's Saturday and um, we did a bunch of other stuff yesterday and but I, I wanted to wait till like the last day to seed it because there was no rain in the forecast so I didn't want it to get baked and the seed get ruined and so on. I mean there's a good chance it still could but my goal was to plant it at the last second and then that way it's planted closer to a rainstorm or rain or whatever but I think it looks pretty good. First time this has ever been tilled. We'll see what it does in the fall. So we just seeded everything. Looks pretty good. I mean, you can't see the seed, obviously, but, but clover. I know it's too early to plant beets, but I planted them anyway because we're probably not gonna make it up here again. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get here one more time before deer season, but we won't make it up here again in the planting time. You know, the next time if we come, will be September. You know, I'm not gonna plant anything in September, especially in the EP. Beets, clover, and then this buck growth stuff. It's a perennial. So we have perennials all on this side. Got some corn in there and beets. Hopefully it grows. So we put up a couple more stands, and then this is one stand that's right around the corner from my brother's blind. Hey. 
We actually put up another stand, but I was rototilling. I was finishing all the rototilling I was doing. So I didn't really get a chance to film that. I don't even know where it is. I mean, I know where it is, but like I didn't actually get to see it. But this stand right here, I've been wanting to put up for a long time because there's like some kind of logging trail that goes out. So you have three trails kind of that you can shoot at. And I've been wanting to put something down here for a long time because they're coming out of the Cedar Swamp. And I was like, that's Natural Avenue. And then me and Ryan walked this last year and we found these actual trails that they were using. You don't see those deer walking on those trails from where our stands were. So for years, for years, probably since the first year I went up there, I complained about the bathroom. The first year the bathroom was in a horrible spot. I hated it. So I never used it. I actually just used the, the woods as my bathroom. And then they brought in this porta potty. It wasn't any better. I used it though. So I've been wanting to make a bathroom for a long time. I had some spare metal left over from another build that I did and I had spare wood. So I basically just brought up a whole bunch of extra stuff and we made the trash can our outhouse. Then we just built a really nice frame around it and put a toilet seat on here. But I know it's not really exciting. No one really wants to see it. It's not used people. I'm not stupid. I'm not disgusting. It just looks like it's used because it's really muddy. <laughs> but we built a new bathroom. I dug it down a foot, just to square, or, you know, like line it up at the side, and then. There you go. Anybody ever watch? You should try to cut tin in a pine tree next to a oh. crapper that's been crapped in with in the summer. Oh. It stinks. Just uh, dirt. But sealed up as good as we could. The only thing is, we don't have a light and not a whole lot of vent. But there'll be plenty of air getting through the bottom to the door. But that's it, man. It's better than this. Better than that. And we took the old door from the cabin. From the old cabin and uh, put that on there and that makes it so much better. We got the lock on it so the lead bears won't get in there. And if they're smart they won't go in there anyway. I want to build this thing for three or four years. Probably the highlight of the weekend. We couldn't stop talking about it because it was so nice. <laughs> it's so stupid. But it's just Man, when you're five miles away from the next human being, having a really nice bathroom is, is nice. And I want to say a really nice bathroom, but it's a nice bathroom. So there we go. We made a bathroom. I brought up my kids 410 and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna buy some trap and then we'll shoot some trap and we'll just use one of those little hand launchers. That's what we did. So we went across the road into the field that has a big drop off and and we're like, let's do this, we ha let's have some fun. I bought three boxes of ammo, and we go over there. The problem is, <laughs> I had the red dot on there, 
and it's a two time zoom. And I forgot to bring the Allen wrench to take it off. So not only did, was the red dot on there, the battery was dead. So <laughs> all you're doing is just looking through this. It was stupid. So right now I'm gonna do this little montage of us shooting trap, okay? Push pause, leave a comment down below with how many you think all four of us total hit. Zero. We hit zero clay pigeons. Luckily, there was the grass was tall enough that we went out there and we just picked them all up because they landed and it was just nice, soft, fluffy grass to land on. So there, none of them broke. That was nice. We can use them next year. I'll make sure I bring my island wrench. And we've been getting images every single day. I have it set up for two transmissions a day and then I have the solar battery box hooked up to it. Every day in the morning, uh, it shows about 93% battery and then at the, at the end of the day, it shows like 98% battery. It's obviously charging back up. While we were at the camp, we only got a couple pictures of I think two deer, two or three deer. And they were probably a good 50 to 60 yards away from the camera. You can barely see their image way off in the distance, but the sensor picked them up. I mean, it says 80 feet, but they were at least 150 feet from the camera. They were all the way on the other side of my food plot and it still picked them up. Obviously we couldn't tell what they were, but we know they were deer and not they weren't big black bears or they weren't cougars or moose or anything like that. But after we left, it became a bear party and the bears just wanted that feeder and they wanted to know what was in that feeder and they kept trying to get into that feeder so we kept watching them every day we were like well do we want to take bets on how long this feeder lasts and it lasted i believe five days four or five days and they got it down but they're very disappointed because there's nothing in the feeder but they're hanging out, they're all over that food plot. So on my spy point, I have it set up, it's just I have the spy point quick release set up on it. I usually use one of those tree screwy things, tree mounts I guess, but you screw it into the tree and then you screw it into the bottom of the camera. I usually use those. I didn't have one with me so I just used that quick release. We have an image of a bear very close to the camera and then in the next image, I have an image of this guy. So unfortunately, it looks like the bears knocked the trail camera off the tree. Steve is convinced it's Sasquatch, but I'm pretty sure it was a bear. So me and Ryan are actually gonna make another trip. We're gonna fix the bear feeder. He bought a couple steel drums, and then he bought the mole tree, you know, spreader things on there with the solar panels. And then I'm gonna get the cables and some stuff so we can mount them. We're gonna get them up a lot higher. We're gonna put a new steel corn feeder there in the food plot and then we're going to put one into the woods. We just haven't narrowed down the stand as, as of yet. So soon me and Ryan are gonna be going up within the next three weeks and then we're going to do all that. So I'll have actually another summer deer camp vlog and then if we pull these bear tags then we're gonna have some bear hunting vlogs too. If Ryan has as much luck bear hunting as he does deer hunting, we're gonna have a pretty cool bear hunting video too. So we got the bathroom done. We got lanes cut. We got food plots planted. We got trail cameras up. We've never had so many trail cameras here. It's gonna be crazy. We gotta get rid of some really cool images this year. So we got two new stands. And then, I mean, all the old stands that are in the woods are practically new stands now because we did such a, Amazing job clearing. Would you agree, Steve? Yes. They're like brand new stands. Yeah. We're excited. I mean, hopefully like the food plot works and deer stay in the area because they do migrate 
in this area. Um, deer migrate here. But, you know, if we can get food in here and it'll stay around, maybe we'll have better, better opportunities in the fall. So, that's it. I know I didn't talk a whole lot. I'll probably add some commentary, which you'd already seen because it's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Comment down below. Hit that like button. Subscribe. I gotta go.